Welcome to section 1.1 graphs and graphing utilities. In this course, we will not be using a graphing calculator, so we'll just be talking about graphs today. Okay, what I have pictured here on top is something called a Cartesian plane. Or a rectangular coordinate system. A rectangular coordinate system is um, two number lines, the x number line, also known as the x axis, and then we have the y number line, also known as the y axis. The x number line is a horizontal number line, and the y number line is a vertical number. These number lines divide the coordinate system into four quadrants. So we have quadrant one, the quadrant two, the quadrant three, the quadrant four. And notice how this goes around in a counterclockwise um, direction when you go from quadrant one. And so what we do is we normally uh, graph ordered pairs or points on the Cartesian plane, so if I have the ordered pair negative 5, comma 3, and then I type a parentheses around them, the numbers, and a comma in the middle, it's called an ordered pair. And the first value is the x value, and the second value is the y value. So if I want to plot this on the Cartesian plane, I look for the negative 5, which is right over here. And I look for the negative 5 on the x value, which x axis, which is right here. And then I look for the y uh, value of 3 on the y axis, which is right there. And where they meet, from here to here, where they meet would be right there. So that would be where I plot the point. Negative 5, comma. Now, order matters, so if I had 3, comma, negative 5, that point would be 3 for the x value and negative 5 for the y value, that would be right here. Okay. The point 0, 0, which is right here, is called the origin. Okay. An example one, let's go ahead and plot these points here. And you can label them with either the letter or the um, actual ordered pair. So negative 3, 6 would be right here. So here's the negative 3 value right there for the x. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is right there. So we're going to be right there. So that would be A. B would be 4, negative 5. Which would be right here. C would be 3, 0, and so the x value here is 3, the y value is 0. So the x value of 3 would be right there, and the y value of 0 is right there, so what they mean would be right here. So if I can that the actual order here. D negative 6 would be right here. Negative 2 would be right here for the y value. So this is where they meet. And 0, 4 would be the x value for 0. And 4 would be the y value. So we have 0 for the x value, which is right here. And here's the x number line. This is the x number line. There's 0 for x, and then the y value of 4 would be right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. And so what they mean would be right there. Okay, and the last point, f, 0, 0, and that would be the origin, which is right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and graph equations in the point plot method. You can actually graph equations using a couple different methods. And the first method is called the point plotting method. And we use this a double time this semester um, in this course. And point plotting, there's several ways to do this point plotting method. I like to make a table. 
So in the first column, I like to put the x value in the first column, and the y value in the second column, which is y equals negative uh, 4 minus x squared. In the last column, I like to put the order pairs. You can pick whatever value you want for x. Notice how my x number line on this graph doesn't go very high. The highest x value I have is 6. I don't want to go anything above 6 um, or below negative 6. So I'll start off with the number 0. From 0 for x, I get 4 minus 0 squared, which gives me 4 minus 0, which is just 4. I get the point 0, 4 because I put 0 in for x, and I get 4 for y. Then the next value I can pick is 1, so y equals 4 minus 1 squared, which is 4 minus 1, which is 3, which is 2. Zero. And you can pick um, 3, 4, 5, and 6 for x. I'm going to pick a, a couple of negative numbers to be used to this. So pick negative 1, be really careful with your parentheses. I'm putting in negative 1 right into there, right in for x. Right there. So I have negative 1 to do a different color here. Negative 1. That's going to equal 4 minus, and this right here is going to be 1. So I get. I get negative 1, 3. Do negative 2 for x, so I get 4 minus negative 2 squared, which is 4 minus 4, which is 0. So negative 2, 0. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and plot these points, and let's see what happens when I do that. Okay, 0, 4 is right here. 1, 3 is right here. 2, 0 is right there. Negative 1, 3 is right here. And negative 2, 0 is right there. Now you don't have to label these points because you already have the points labeled in your table. So um, on the test or exam, I'll say make sure you label your points in a table or on your graph. Um, I didn't label my graph because it would be too clogged up. But um, let's go ahead and put points right here and here. And when I go ahead and draw my graph, you're going to notice that I'm going to make a little curvature there and kind of like dead this on that way. That on that way. And I'm going to put arrow to the end of this in this line because um, there are actually more values of x I could have picked. And if I did, those values would be um, extended onto this graph here. So you notice how I made this also curved and not pointed. Um, we'll talk more about that in a different chapter. Okay. Let's go ahead and do example three. Graph y equals the absolute value of x, it's like integers starting with negative 3 to 3. Oh, and I didn't read my directions in the last example, I should have done negative 3 to 3. So let's go ahead and finish that up. So um, I do negative 3 here, so y equals 4 minus negative 3 squared, which is 4 minus 9, which is negative 5. So it's negative 3 and negative 5. Let's go ahead and finish that there. Let me go ahead and write this. So negative 3, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I choose 3, then y would be 4 minus 3 squared, which would be 4 minus 9, which is negative 5. So 3, negative 5, which would be right here. Oops. Okay, and again, I'll draw this again the same way I did before. Whoops. Okay, my iPad's getting kind of crazy there, so I'm going to go ahead and draw this. Hopefully it'll work. And again, the arrows are there because there are more values that I can pick that would be beyond that graph of paper. Okay, now example three. We're going to do the same thing, and we're going to do the point ply method. Make a table. I'm going to go from negative three to three for x. That's how much to go in order. So y equals the absolute value of x. And then my points... So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So y equals the absolute value of 3, which is just 3. So negative 3, 3. y equals the absolute value of 2. My bad, it's negative 3 there. 2, so I get negative 2, 2. y equals the absolute value of negative 1. So I get 1, negative 1, 1. 
y equals absolute value of 0, which is just 0, so 0, 0. y equals absolute value of 1, so I get 1, 1. y equals absolute value of 2, which is 2. And y equals absolute value of 3, which is just 3. Okay. I'm going to graph that real quick. So it's negative 3, 3. Negative 2, 2. Negative 1, 1. 0, 0. 1, 1. 2, 2. And 3, 3. And you, know, you notice if I'd done um, x equals negative 4, then I would have gotten 4 for the value of y, which would be right there. That's why we have those arrows there to continue. And this actually, when you graph it, it's actually going to be a pointed V um, shape. It's an absolute value function. Okay. The thing I want to talk about are intercepts. And intercepts, we're going to see a lot of these in this course. And intercepts are um, where they cross the x or y um, number line. So here, this is a um, intercept right here. This is an x-intercept because it's on the x-axis. Here's another um, x-intercept, and here's another one, and another one, and another one. All x-intercepts have y being zero. So the first value is something, but the y value is always zero. Okay, So this would be 3, 0, 5, 0, negative 3, 0, negative 4, 0, and negative 5, 0. Those are all x intercepts. All uh, y-intercepts are the intercepts on the y-axis, so these would all be y-intercepts. And so all y-intercepts have 0 for the x value, and some number there. So this would be 0, 5, 0, 3, 0, negative 2, 0, and this would be 0, 1, negative 4. The point, um, which is in green, the point zero, 0, which is right here, is both an x-intercept and y-intercept. Okay, so in example 5, let's go ahead and identify the x and y-intercepts. So in this case, the x-intercept is right here. So it is negative 1. The point is going to be negative 1, 0. The y-intercept is right here. That's going to be 2 or 0, 2. On the test, I'm going to ask you to, or the exam, I'm going to ask you to give me the order pair. Okay. So for part B, the x-intercept is right here. So it's 3, or 3, 0. And notice how this graph here doesn't cross the y-axis off, so there's no y-intercept. Okay. And in part C, we have the x-intercept is 0, or 0, 0. And the y-intercept is 0, or 0, 0. Okay, that would be that point right there. Okay, so on your own, go ahead and do the next um, example. I'll go ahead and pause my video, and you can pause your video too. Okay, so the answer to on your own, you should have x-intercept would be negative 3 or negative 3, 0. The y-intercept is 5 or 0, 5. The next one you have x intercept, there's no x intercept. And there is y intercept is 4 or 0, 4. And this one is x and y intercepts are 0 or 0, 0. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, you can watch the next part 2. I'll go ahead and stop this video and you can watch part 2.